Well, good morning and welcome to our service at Barclay Beaufort this morning. Um, a particular welcome if you're a visitor um, and we hope that all of you can stay for uh, soup and sandwiches in the pillar hall after the service, so the hall that you walk through to come in. A particular welcome to uh, the Reverend Andrea Price uh, joining us from St Michael's and will be leading the service this morning. This is part of a, a, a the church grouping that we're in, um, the minister's kind of swapping around to lead services so we get to know each other better. So Andrea, we're delighted to have you uh, leading the service this morning. Now, I do have quite a number of other notices that David has sent me to, to run through, so I will do that now. Um, on Tuesday at two o'clock, the Afternoon Fellowship are hosting a four-church beetle drive in the Pillar Hall, so that's two o'clock on Tuesday. And on, at seven o'clock, we have the Lent course that Fiona Kennedy is leading. So Tuesday at seven is the version on Zoom. And then at 1.30 on Thursday afternoon, there's the in-person version of the, of the same uh, course being led by Fiona at Polworth. Um, you'll know that uh, one of our senior elders, uh, Roberta Thompson, died in, a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and a thanksgiving service for Roberta is in the church at 11 o'clock on Friday, if you're able to join us for that. Next Saturday, we have a Hall's Kitchen Cleanup at 10 o'clock. I've got a little bit more on that. Um, and at 6 o'clock, it's the AKA Movie Night in the Pillar Hall. I don't know what the movie is, but um, uh, 6 o'clock on Saturday. And then Sunday, our usual service uh, at 10.30. And at 6.30, we've got a praise and prayer night um, in the sanctuary. Uh, so that's next Sunday evening, and uh, Rachel will be leading us for that. If anyone is interested in becoming a new member of the church, if you could speak to David by next Sunday or drop him an email to join for the communion service on Sunday the 26th of March. And even if you're thinking about transferring your lines or your membership from another church, if you could also speak to David, please. And then a, a longer notice about the halls group, which looks after the, uh, the halls and the sanctuary and everything in the church. Um, the Halls Group is beginning to think about cleaning and tidying. And if you're someone who likes to help out with that, but don't have uh, very much time to commit to something long term, this might be the group for you. A varied range of tasks focused on practical jobs that need to be done around the church uh, to make it a welcoming place for users and worshippers. Uh, there's very uh, few meetings, very little paperwork, quite a lot of practical getting together to do things. Um, and. Uh, Freshments are always offered at the end. Uh, so coming up, there is the Hall's Kitchen Spring Clean on Saturday the 11th, so that's next Saturday at 10 o'clock, and we'll be finished by lunchtime. And then going round to do an inspection and inventory of the sanctuary here on Sunday the 12th, immediately after the service, and it will not take longer than an hour or two. Th this is a, a complete warren of a building. There's rooms and, and passages and things and all sorts of places. So if you've never had a proper wander around, this is the way for you to get to see the building. And if you are interested, uh, Leslie Anderson would be delighted to take your name to help with that. She's sitting at the, in the balcony, so I can't point her out, but she'll be in the pillar hall and we'll be happy uh, if you could help and if you're interested in getting involved in the group. Can I encourage you to also sign up for our email newsletter um, and you will get the, uh, all the news emailed out to you. Now, I think those are all the notices. No one is waving at me, so I think that is right. Andrea, thank you. Thank you very much, John. Good morning, and thank you for your very warm welcome, John, and everybody who has managed to speak to already. It's good to be here with you. Uh, at this very moment, David will be getting ready to lead worship at St. Michael's. They start at 11, as you used to, have, I'm told. So we're a little bit ahead of them. Uh, when you, as you're listening to me throughout the service, you probably notice a little bit of a strange accent. I don't have to listen to myself, so I don't hear it. But we could either play Guess Where She's Coming From, or I could tell you that in 1986, I came to this country getting married to my husband and then moved straight up to Orkney, where we lived for nearly 30 years and brought up three children and um, then I went for five years to London and now I'm here in Edinburgh since, 19, uh, since 2018. 
So hence the slightly weird and wonky accent. And you may even notice some mistakes. You know, you never know with foreigners. <laughs> now let us worship God together and rejoice in singing glory be to God the Father. seated. And let us pray. Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, we praise you for your power and creativity, bringing forth the universe and all its creatures, from tiny subparticles to great whales, from simple cells to complex ecosystems from age-old rock formations to constantly involving organisms. Glory to you, our God, the creator, sustainer, and lover of us all. Almighty God, you came among us in Jesus of Nazareth. You called him in his baptism and affirmed him to us as your son in his words and wonders and on the mountaintop. Now we are coming nearer to his suffering to wonder again at his faithfulness and your power even over evil and death. Glory to you, our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, visible face of love living the will of God. Almighty God, mover of our hearts and minds, lover of our souls, holy healing spirit, you connect all there is and enfold it in yourself. Glory to you, our God, Holy Spirit, shaker and remaker of all that is tired and worn. And so we bring before you, Lord, all that has gone wrong in the past days. We bring you our regrets. We bring you our sorrow over things we have thought, sa said, or done which were not serving you well or hurting others and ourselves. Merciful God, forgive us and guide our hearts and minds, our hands and feet to your path of love and peace again. 
be with us this morning and guide us anew with glimpses of your glory that we may live life to the full, doing your will. We ask you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from John 17, verses 1 to 5. Jesus prays to be glorified. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all the people that might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now, this is our eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave to me. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Amen. And thanks be to God for his word. Thank you, Joel. Right. I wonder if any of you have thought um, what you're going to do when you grow up. Have you had a thought about that before? Some of you older ones are maybe sometimes wondering. Yeah. yeah. Is anybody prepared to say and come up beside me and, and tell us what you're... You could speak into this microphone. Or you're not telling. <laughs> Yeah, go on. Come and tell us. Some sport of sports player. Like a sports player. You're going to be a sportswoman. Yeah. Very good. Which sport in particular? Have you got a favourite? Um, maybe basketball or athletics. Cool. Excellent. Like Mrs. Miss Muir. What was her first name? Lorna. Didn't she do well? Did you watch it last night? It was amazing. What a woman. Yeah, go on. You tell us. I want to be an actress. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic, too. Have you got a very good memory? Yeah, I don't know. Huh? <laughs> Keep practicing. I think actors have to have very good memories. That's why I would never be an actor, because I just couldn't do that. Anybody else wanting to say what they're thinking of? There's so many options. I remember when I was a little older than you, and when I sat, started having to think what to do, it was really hard, because there has, thank God, so many different things we can do in life. Did you ever think why you want to be an actress or a sportswoman? Is there a reason? Dramatic. You, you like being dramatic? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Good answer. Some people, when I've asked this before, in, in the, some people say, well, I want to be rich and famous. What do you think of that? Is that a good reason to want to be something? To be rich and famous? No. Why do you think not, Joel? Tell us. Because it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. So there. <laughs> Don't you dare. Pardon? It's probably not going to happen these days. So. Exactly. It might, it might not be happening. So please be a realistic people. <laughs> and it's not acceptable because why? Why can't we not? Why are we not supposed to be rich and famous? Right, it's more the likelihood of it. Okay, yeah, what do you think? Because it's not fair and it's not very equal for people that like... Right, it's, it's not very fair and it's not very equal. Very, very good thought. I also think that it's actually quite difficult. Yeah. You know, if you are rich and if you are famous, you can never go out just for a laugh. You have to hide yourself and put on a wig and a mask and, a, and glasses. The really famous people have not got the freedom to go where they want because somebody will run after them and say, can you give me an autograph, please? Oh, here's a famous person. You know, or people want to be their friends. 
not because they like them, but because they maybe want to also be in the photograph or also want to get some money from the rich people. So it's, it's not very easy to be rich and famous at all. There was one person who was famous, never rich, but rich in a different way, you could say. And I bet you can guess who I'm thinking of. God. Who? God. God. Yeah, I suppose. He's called? Jesus. Jesus, absolutely. Jesus was really famous, wasn't he? Because he drew lots of crowds to follow him and leave their work and just go and listen to him. And it caused quite an upset in the, in the community. And yet he was the only one who's, who was worth to be rich and famous. Can you think of things he did that makes him worth being rich and famous? Help people. He helped people, yeah. Anything else? He, he helped people. Yeah, he helped people practically and he taught people as well. Yeah. And he was never nasty, was he? He was always kind. And even when people were very nasty to him, did he retaliate? Did he hit back? Did he slam people down? No, absolutely not. Today, we, Jules just read, read to us a passage, and there was one word in it. Uh, the word, I wonder if you kind of wondered what it was, Joel. The word was glorify. Do you know what glorify means? What do you think it could mean? Yeah, so how, what, what happens when somebody has glory? They're happy. They're happy, hopefully. I think it's sort of, that's why I was talking to you about fame, because glory is a little bit more than even fame, isn't it? Because if I looked it up in the diary what glory means. It's one of those church words, isn't it? We don't use it very often. We sometimes talk about I've seen a glorious sunset. Have you seen that? Said that? Yeah. And heard it? Um, or we say, that was the crowning glory of his career. Which means, wow, it was really special. Not everybody achieves that. Like, um, did you watch uh, Chariots of Fire on the television? Yeah? There's a, it's a story about Eric Little, who was very famous on several levels. And his crowning glory was when he won the gold medal in the 400 meter um, Olympic Games, 19, what was it, 24? Something like that, yeah. And that was certainly his, the crowning glory of his sports career, and what a career it was. Glory is a strange word, isn't it? We kind of make it the superlative, but the, trans, the dictionary says it just means praise, honor, and distinction. And really, Jesus is the only one who is worth proper glory, who is worth praise, honor, and distinction. We sometimes get a little bit of it in our lives. Sometimes we witness somebody doing good and like Eric Little, being a great sportsman and later on also a great Christian. Because Eric didn't just do sports. When he was a prisoner of war in China, he organized all the other prisoners and their children to do sports, to pass the time and not go mad in, during the Second World War. Do you remember those stories? He's worth reading up about. So he showed God's glory in his life, but most of all, we see God's glory in the life of Jesus. And that's why we're here, isn't it? We are wanting to learn more and more about what Jesus did and what he said so he can teach us and shape us. So let's take Jesus' example. When we start wanting to be something or somebody, let's pray like Jesus did, because at that point, Jesus prayed to God and said, help. Help me to glorify you, to make you great, to praise you, to honor you. And he was 
going to have a tough, tough time very soon, and I'll speak about that in a little while. Right, shall we sing about the great big God that we glorify? Yeah? I hear that some of you are going to teach us the actions. Is that right? Do that. Are you going to? <clears throat> All right, let's sing and stand and action together. Our God is a great big God.
Let's pray. Loving God, we come before you, our God and our King, aware of your sovereignty, your glory, your majesty. We're aware of how far short of your glorious standard we fall. And yet we are thankful for the blood of Jesus, which, as we've just sung, can make the foulest clean. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus, our King and our Redeemer. And so we turn our attention to events in the world and we ask that you would intervene we pray particularly this morning for those who are suffering in the Ukraine. The horrors of war, the atrocities doubtless of both sides, the families torn apart, the children I was reading about this morning which have been stolen by Putin and put into camps, hundreds of thousands. Father, we pray for your grace for those children and for the parents. We pray for perseverance for those fighters in Ukraine fighting against the injustice and the horror of this invasion. We pray for the continued support of the international community. And yet, Lord, we also pray for your kingdom to come, for your reign to be established in Ukraine, just as it is in heaven. We long for you to come and usher in that time where you will reign as Prince of Peace. And we pray for compassion in this country for refugees, for those fleeing war, persecution, or economic hardship. We pray for establishment of safe and legal routes into the country so that people don't have to risk their lives to come across on small boats. We pray for our relationship with Europe and the Windsor framework that was announced this week. Lord, we pray that this would be a solution that's acceptable to all parties in Northern Ireland, that they would be able to restore a government in Stormont. Father, it's a perilous situation, it's a difficult situation, and no one wants to see you return to the troubles. And Lord, we pray for the endless government scandals and we pray that they would cease. Lord, that we would be able to focus, that the government would be able to focus their energies on, on what really matters to the people of this country. The cost of living price, crisis, the rising energy bills and food costs and people that are having to rely on food banks. God, there are so many desperate people. We pray that your hand of comfort and support would be with them. We pray that you would reach the most vulnerable, remembering that you're a God who brings good news to the poor, freedom to the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, that you came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So let it come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us sing together once again, Speak, O Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and reflections of all our hearts and minds be acceptable to God, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. I don't know if you've ever seen an inscription, sometimes in architecture, over a, over a doorway, for example, which read, Soli Deo Gloria. Yeah, yeah, you've seen it. It, it, it was quite a popular motto to put over people's doorways in the Middle Ages when people still knew Latin. Um, it means, to God alone be glory. Once uh, I heard about a small firm which was producing ornaments of a new age kind of variety. So there would be dragons and wizards. And in their little shop, they were also selling crystals and kind of ornamental um, Celtic symbol, you know, decorated things for tourists. And they were needing, at the beginning of their business, they needed a name. 
So they called themselves Solideo, because above the entrance door to their shop was this medieval lintel saying Solideo Gloria. And it made me giggle, because I don't think they knew what it meant. This decidedly non-Christian shop was working for God alone, you could say. <laughs> but it's a bit sad too, isn't it? That people don't know anymore what these things mean. Soli Deo Gloria. To God alone be glory. For who better to teach and to guide us than the source of life and love? Who better to spend our precious free time on a Sunday? Bless you, you're here. Who better than advising us by reading the scripture and studying it? Who better to inspire us but God's Spirit? You'll have heard about on, or of the composer Johann Sebastian Bach. You may be a fan and, and enjoy listening to his music on Radio 4. No, 3, sorry. Radio FM. Oh, what about his? <laughs> on many of his manuscripts, and there were many, he wrote Soli Deo Gloria, to God alone be glory. And indeed, Bach gave God glory with everything he wrote. And he wrote an enormous number of pieces of music. And the quality of it is sublime. Anybody who, st who studies his, his music and his texts, they're both equally important to him, will find that his music is really a religious contemplation and exaltation of God. It is giving God glory. If you have time and the opportunity, listen to, for example, the St. Matthew Passion of his, or the St. John Passion. It is musical preaching of the best kind. But society didn't get it. Even in the 18th century, music was subjected to fashion. And so, soon after his death, the church also, the church and his, his, his contemporaries, sadly lost interest and completely forgot about his, his, uh, his body of work until Mendelssohn Bartholdi rediscovered Bach's work and put on performances and rediscovered the importance of Bach's work. Someone said, short is the glory that is given and taken by men, and sorrow followeth ever the glory of this world. Short is the glory that is given and taken by men, and sorrow followeth ever the glory of this world. Isn't it true? Today's reading is the beginning of Jesus' prayer, sometimes called his high priestly prayer. It comes just before his arrest, and as you who have studied all of John's Gospel until this point know very well, at the end of his instructions to his friends over the Last Supper. They've had their dinner, they were shocked by Jesus getting up and washing the disciples' feet, behaving as if he was a slave. I think we can hardly appreciate how shocking that was in those days the teacher making himself to be a slave. The disciples had listened to him comparing dying to a homecoming to God. They heard him speak about a promised helper who would come. They'd heard him compare everybody to a vineyard, vine, branches, fruit. They'd also heard about persecution coming. It was all rather hard to take it all in and puzzling to understand. And then there's the start of his prayer. It sounds a bit more upbeat. Glorify your son so that I can glorify you. Well, is Jesus asking here for praise, honor, and distinction from God? Does he want to be famous after all? Of course not. Jesus 
is in front of his friends doing what he's done so often in his ministry. He prays. He draws near to God because he knows full well that he will need all the strength that a human can have and more to fulfill his mission. It is, as we now say, a crucial time. I think there's the word cross in there, isn't there? Crucial cross, isn't it? And far from glitz and glamour, fame or riches, which is what the world would uh, appreciate and find praiseworthy, Jesus is going to be faced with the exact opposite. In order to live the love of God on this earth completely without compromise, Jesus is soon going to be betrayed by one of his friends, Judas. He's going to be handed over to the authorities. He's going to be left by all his other friends, all on his own. He is going to be subjected to torture and trial in front of a court which is more into political appeasement than justice. And so it comes, as you know, that the glory of God was nailed to the cross and overcame evil and even death only in the resurrection three days later. Jesus is ultimately being glorified by God at Easter, but he didn't know it when he did, said this prayer. God knew Jesus needed all the courage he could muster. God only in Easter gives him the affirmation that his words and his work were worth everything he gave. Jesus glorified God, the creating Father of all the universe, by living the love of God without compromise, by suffering, dying, and rising to new life, to live and reign forever. And in consequence, all who confess Jesus Christ as Lord will inherit with and through him eternal life. Isn't that wonderful? Verse 3 explains what eternal life is. It says, and this is eternal life, that they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. There's no word about a life after this life. Eternal life is all about knowing God and Jesus. What happens after death, I suppose, is all in God's hand. So I think the church was wrong to try and frighten people into church in the Middle Ages, to make long sermons about hell and angels, and there were apparently uh, academic treatises about how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. Bananas. That's not what Jesus came to teach. We are to trust God entirely in this life and serve him entirely in this life. Christian aid has as its strap line, we believe in life before death. Whew. It's a bit, hmm, come on, such. But aren't they right? That's what we're supposed to do. What happens after death is in God's hand. We cannot know it. None of us, apart from Jesus, has been there and come back. And he, didn't, he chose not to tell anybody because does it matter? It matters that we love now. We can trust that we will go home, whatever shape that takes. Now we are called to live, to live in God's spirit and take part in living and loving as God wants to live and love. We are to take part in kingdom building. God calls all of us to live fully now and even through death without a worry. New life, 
The new creation has not come fully yet apart from in Jesus. God has begun to reshape the world with his spirit. We are all together on the road. That was the first name for Christians, people on the road, people off the way. And that caused Paul to completely reject what was important in his time for the Greek society. The educated Greek wanted honor. Nowadays we say fame. And Paul said, I don't care. It's not important. Instead, he sought to serve God alone. He accepted shame and dishonor, which did happen more and more, because the more Paul and other Christians talked about Jesus, the more the host congregation, which was the Jewish tradition, decided to chuck him out. The Christians had to leave eventually. It was a really difficult time for everybody. You know, if you've ever been part of a, um, of a situation in church where people disagreed with each other, how painful that is. And it would have been equally painful for the, peop the Jewish people who decided to stick with the old teaching and then the Christians who said, no, no, you must understand, Jesus has come, the Messiah has been. It was a terrible time for everybody, and a dangerous one too, because it meant that Christians were evicted, they were told to leave, and they had not got the protection anymore of the state, because Judaism was one of the protected religions in, Roman, in the Roman world. So what about us? 2,000 years later, we live in a time and in, in part of, in a land which is full of fame and riches. Many people crave fame and glory. The strength and the many talents that they have, they think they've got. And few ask, well, where did we get it from? Many forget that we are all here by the grace of God. Unlike Jesus, who refused the tempter's suggestion to worship him, to use his power for, black, for public stunts, and to provide for his personal needs, we can often feel tempted to do what we crave, because we're worth it, aren't we? We spend time, energy, and money to impress others. What for? But many are pulled along by the gospel of the advertising industry. Many others, on, in contrast, are becoming, well, it's not really a contrast, it can happen both to one person. Many others are becoming utterly depressed by the constant negative news we have to hear. And the news it seems to be neglecting to remember all the positives that are happening too. Who looks for the glory of God in small things? Who spends their time caring, serving, and loving for free? This is what Jesus commanded. This is where comfort and joy will come from. When we love God and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We're in the time of Lent. And I think I'm probably a bat you haven't seen for a long time, you know, with my, my German outfit, which has been also decorated with this stole, which is the, the Protestant churches have borrowed from the more Catholic branches of the church. And it changes color. So when it's a happy time, it's a white stole. And very handily, I was given this one for my ordination. It can be turned. So this is penitential time the time before Easter and before Christmas, when it's a purple color, reminding us that we are in a reflective mood, in a penitential mood, you would say, in the old-fashioned language. In this season of Lent, 
Let us take an example again of Jesus and pray. And ask God to give us the strength to serve him. To, for God to work his glory through our ordinary tasks. Let us ask in prayer for God to come near to us, to forgive us, to strengthen our faith, that we too may be able to glorify God in all we think and say and do. And with that, may we indeed glorify God, the creating Father, Jesus, our teacher and good shepherd, and his loving, guiding spirit. There's a doxology which is very old, from the third century in Egypt. It went like this, translated, I presume. May none of God's wonderful works keep silence night or morning. Bright stars, high mountains, the depth of the seas, sources of rushing rivers. May all these break into song as we sing to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May all the angels in heavens reply, Amen, Amen, Amen. Power, praise, honor, eternal glory to God, the only giver of grace. Amen, Amen, Amen. Just take a moment to reflect um, before we enter into our final hymn. And so we'll be singing, Lord be glorified, followed by um, what a beautiful name, at which point it would be wonderful for you to stand and sing.
So go to love and serve the Lord, giving glory to him, honor, praise, distinction, and only him. Everything you do, make it special and kind and loving. And the blessing of God Almighty, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. And I warned, Rachel, that I might do this. If I sing and you repeat it, can you do that? Okay? Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. 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 Bless you. Thank you.